What's going on everybody? You can call me Heroes 3 Guy and this video is going to be a poll video. So I'm going to present you guys with a scenario or a situation in which you're going to have to choose between five different options. And not only would I like to hear your opinions and feedback in the comment section below, but I also created a poll in my communities tab on my YouTube channel in which I'd like you guys to vote. Now you can find this poll by going to my communities tab. And if you use the control F feature to find something, you just simply type in poll video number one, and it should bring it right up. And I'll have that information in the description below. So as far as the scenario or situation goes, it's a Friday night and you're going to bed extra early because you plan to spend your entire Saturday playing Heroes 3 Horn of the Abyss. So you go to bed early, you get up early, you're super excited, but to your dismay, when you wake up, you see a wizard sitting at the foot of your bed. And next to the wizard is an awesome gaming computer, an awesome gaming desk, chair, everything. It's an epic gaming setup. Also, next to the wizard is a huge pot of gold. And the wizard tells you, if you can beat his map by the end of the day, without using a single load game autosave or redoing a single turn, you not only get to keep the epic gaming setup, but you also get to keep his huge pot of gold. But if you fail to beat his map, he's gonna kick you really hard, right in the crotch. And then he's gonna poof away, take his gaming setup and huge pot of gold with him. So, not much is known about this wizard's map besides that it's an extra large map with an underground and it has a sizable amount of water. And the only thing you get to choose is your starting hero. The wizard presents you with five different starting heroes to choose from. And now, just because you choose one, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be going against the other four. He's simply providing you with five different options. So I'm going to briefly show you guys each of the five starting hero options. And then afterwards, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail over each one of the heroes to give you guys a little bit of an in-depth view of the theme that I was going for for each hero uh, so you guys can make the most informed decision as far as which hero you would choose. So before I briefly show you guys each of the five heroes to choose from, I want to say a few things. All of these heroes have all of their artifact slots filled, and not a single artifact will be found on two different heroes. So if there is a hero with a particular artifact, the other four heroes will not have that artifact. There are no duplicate artifacts between these heroes. And the same goes for creatures. All five of these heroes have all seven of their creature slots filled with seven unique creatures. And not a single creature will be found on two different heroes. So if there is a hero who has archdevils, the other four heroes will not have archdevils. Also, you are informed by the wizard that the creatures that you start with are the only creatures that you are able to recruit on your homelands. Also, all five of these heroes have all eight of their secondary skills filled up, all of which are at expert level. Now, all five of these heroes have expert wisdom, expert offense, expert armor, and expert earth magic. The remaining four secondary skills are where there are some variation between these five heroes. So I'm gonna briefly show you guys all five of these heroes before I then go ahead and do a little bit more in-depth explanation of each of them. So the first is Isra, the powerful undead Lich Queen.
The second choice is Malekith, the unrivaled sorcerer. The third option is Craighack, the epic warrior. The fourth option is Tazar the Tank. And the fifth option is Sir Mulich, the Great Leader. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more of an in-depth view of each of these heroes so that you can really understand where I was coming from when I, uh, I created these guys, kind of the theme I was going for, and also to help you uh, make a better decision as far as who you would pick as your starting hero. So the first option is Isra here, and I was going for kind of an undead evil ruler, if you will, who has an evil or toxic presence or aura around them. Uh, one that kind of instills fear or uh, cripples their opponents. So if you look at their creatures, they're composed of what I would say are the two most evil factions, Inferno and Necropolis. And if you look at the artifacts, it's very much kind of an evil theme and a uh, debuff your enemy theme. So of course you have Armor of the Damned, which is going to cast four different debuffs on your opponents. Slow, Curse, Weakness, and Misfortune. But you also have a number of artifacts that are going to cripple your opponents. So you have the Hideous Mask and the Ring of Suppression, lowering enemies' morale. And then you have the Runes of Eminency, the Shaman's Puppet, and the Demon's Horseshoe, lowering enemy luck. And also, the Ghost Dragons provide minus one to enemy morale. And the Arch Devils provide minus two to enemy luck. So between the Arch Devils and the artifacts, you're providing minus six luck. And that's not even factoring in the misfortune that's cast on them. You are absolutely crippling your enemy's luck, making them hit for reduced damage more times than not. Also, you're giving your opponents minus three morale. That's a huge chunk into the morale. And then I gave him the Cloak of the Undead King. So, of course, his specialty is necromancy. Obviously, he's going to have expert necromancy. So... At expert level, he's going to resurrect liches instead of skeletons. So, I did give him the golden bow for the sake of his liches. And then as far as the last artifact slot, I went ahead and gave him the still eye of the dragon. It looks evil enough, I'd say. And it gives plus one morale and luck. And really, I did it for that plus one morale. Uh, because I did not want the three inferno creatures to have negative morale. Because they have undead in the group. Uh, they gave minus one to, to morale. This neutralizes it. So the three units here do not have positive nor negative morale. And then as far as the secondary skills, of course, they're going to have uh, the offense, armor, earth, magic, and wisdom, like all five of these heroes. And of course, he's going to have necromancy. It fits the specialty, fits the cloak of the undead king. But he is the only hero who has fire magic. Also, he has archery to go along with the Liches and also the Magogs here, and then Expert Logistics. And as far as the creatures go, I mean, it has the 7th, 6th uh, and 7th level creature of each of the factions, and then it has, of course, the level 5 for the Liches, and then level 4 and level 2. I thought about giving this guy Pit Fiends or Pit Lords instead. However, if you're given a situation where you're going to build your army of these seven specific units i don't really want you summoning demons with your pit lords so i decided to take them out and throw magogs in there because they have a nice aoe fireball attack and he does have the gold bow and expert archery so that is the first option to choose from and kind of the theme i was going with the second option with malekith here i was going for just a real real powerful offensive spellcaster who also Sunders the his enemy's ability to be a powerful caster. So if you look, his creatures are made up of the dungeon and conflux factions. It has the level six and seven 
from each and also the five. And then I also threw in fairy dragons because uh, they're offensive spellcasters in their own right. So it kind of fit his theme. And then as far as the artifacts go, I, I gave him the Armageddon's Blade. So he's going to be able to cast Expert Armageddon. Even though he doesn't have Expert Fire Magic, his Armageddon will be at Expert level. And it's going to hit all enemies, not damage his own. And then I also gave him the Orb of Vulnerability to go with it. So if he's going against anyone who would otherwise be immune to Armageddon, it's going to now hit them. But it doesn't take away immunities given by artifacts. So his units will still remain immune. So he's going to have just a nasty Armageddon that hits just about everyone. And his units are always going to be immune to it. Not only that, but he has the Orb of Tempestuous Fire to increase the damage of the Armageddon. He's got the Orb of Silt. He does have Earth Magic if he wants to do a powerful implosion. And then, of course, like I said, he sunders his enemy's spell power. So he has the Charm of Eclipse, the Plate of Dying Light, and the Seal of Sunset to reduce it. And he's also the only hero to have the secondary skill Interference. As far as his other slots go, I had to fill them in with a few things. Uh, I gave him the Vial of Dragon Blood. He does have two dragons, so that's fitting. And then I just filled the rest of his slots with pieces of the Power of the Dragon Father, give some knowledge and spell power, a little bit of attack and defense. And I had to fill in the last slot, so I threw the Ring of Conjuring on there, increased duration of his spells by two. And as far as the secondary skills, obviously he's going to have Sorcery, that's his specialty. Of course he has the Offense Armor, the Wisdom and Earth Magic like the rest, and of course Interference. But he also has leadership. He does have three different factions here. And then I did go ahead and give him logistics so he can move a little better over the ground. So as far as the third option is we have Craig Hack, who I wanted to build him around just a all-out blitzing, powerful offensive force. So if you look at his artifacts here, he's got the Iron Fist of the Ogre. That's just a huge offensive buff. I mean, haste, bloodlust, fire shield, counter strike, that is deadly. Also the bow of the sharpshooter, that allows his units to have no obstacle penalty, range penalty. He can your units can shoot enemies with an enemy uh, adjacent to them. Very nice. I've uh, gave him some artifacts to increase his luck and morale. That really helps increase his damage, chance to have more turns, and also increase his speed here with the ring of the wayfarer and cape of velocity plus 3 speed. Uh, and then I threw Boots of Speed on him. Uh, that kind of goes with his logistics and pathfinding, help him move across the land better. And to fill his last slot, I gave him the Quiet Eye of the Dragon, plus one attack and defense. And his units, as you can see, are composed of Stronghold and Tower units, and then two different neutral creatures in the Azuri Dragon and the Champion. So if you notice, he's got the only level 7 shooter and the only two level 6 shooters in the game. And he does have the Expert Archery and Bow of the Sharpshooter to go with it. Also, the Ancient Behemoths and Nagas are very offensive units, but they're slow. But that really is countered with Cape of Velocity and the Ring of the Wayfarer. Not to mention, he has the second fastest unit in the game with plus three speed added to them. So they would go before Phoenixes if they aren't buffed by an artifact or some other uh, ability. And so... If they go first, they can cast the Haste, and it really brings the best out of the slow Naga Queens and Ancient Behemoths. And then, of course, has the Thunderbirds as well to fill that last slot. And as far as the secondary skills go, he's got some nice uh, uh, pathfinding and logistics, can move well across the land. Of course, there's going to be the offense, armor, wisdom, and earth magic. I threw archery in there, of course, fits the theme, and then leadership. So he's getting a total of six morale here. So he has really good morale despite having three different factions in his army. Really, really good offensive themed hero. So the fourth guy, I was going more of a defensive themed hero. So of course it's Tazar, whose specialty is armor. And his units are composed of cove and fortress units, kind of the swamp units. And also the Rust Dragons, the neutral creature. And if you look at his artifacts, I wanted to go tanky, of course, so I thought, all right, let's give him the Pendant of Reflection, which in all gives all of his units 50% magic resistance. And also, 
he is the only one of these five that have resistance. So all of his units have a 70% chance to resist a hostile spell. And then I also decided to give him the Elixir of Life. That increases the life of all of uh, all the units by 25%, plus, you know, the four, to their health off the component effects. And uh, so two just really, really nice, tanky, buff, you know, keep your units nice and tanky. And then as far as going in the last few items, I figured, uh, you know, I had to fill them with some artifacts that aren't on the other heroes. So I decided to give him Wizard's Well. That's helpful. And then he is the only one of these five that has water magic. So I thought that this might be a good spell to have. And then I had to fill up his last slot, and I decided, all right, this fits perfectly. Gives him a nice base of primary stats. The spell in the spell books, not really that useful, but it gives some nice primary stat boosts. And then as far as the secondary skills go, he's one of the two that has navigation. And then, of course, he has his earth magic, offense, armor, wisdom. Uh, but again, he is the only one that has resistance. He's the only one that has water magic. I threw leadership on him because he is mixing three different factions. And yes, he does have that navigation as well. So a very tanky themed hero. Not to mention, Nyx warriors are a very tanky unit with their ignore 60% of enemies attack skill. So a very, very tanky themed hero here. And as far as the fifth and final option, he doesn't really have a whole lot of uh, in-battle utility from his artifacts or anything like that, besides his specialty. So all of his creatures have plus two speed, so that is nice. Uh, I, I wanted him to be like that uh, leader that his troops and his kingdom really respect. And if you look here, he's got the Statue of Legion. So all of the castles he owns, all of the creature growth is going to be increased by 50%. So that's going to help him accrue an army faster. Um, I also gave him the Angel Wings and the Admiral's Hat. That's going to help him move tremendously across the water, uh, tremendously across the land. He's got boots of the Wayfarer, or Wayfarer's boots, so it's like he has expert pathfinding. He also has the Equestrian's Glove to help his movement that much more. And then I had to fill his last few slots, so I just gave him, you know, some defense, spell power, some attack, and... I had to fill his last slot with something. It fit the fit the bill. Diplomat's ring for a good leader. Hey, worked out. And as far as his secondary skills, he's very much a um, you know a, a land oriented guy. He's got navigation, logistics. These boots are giving him expert pathfinding, permanent fly, great utility over water, and then of course offense armor, uh, earth magic wisdom. I gave him leadership because he is a great leader. And then is the, he is the only one of these five to have expert air magic. Again, meaning he's going to be the only one that can cast multiple dimension doors in a turn. So it fits his theme of being a very good adventure map hero and a great leader. And if you look at his units, he of course is composed of rampart and castle units. And then I also threw in the crystal dragons on him. It has crystal generation for his kingdom, so it seemed to fit. Um, and then, of course, the Archangels, Gold Dragons, the level 6 creatures, and then level 5. And I decided to give Crusaders over Zealots. He doesn't have archery, and Crusaders are great level 4 units with that Strikes Twice ability. I hope you guys have enjoyed this poll video. I hope you enjoy the scenario and the five different heroes you have to choose from. I hope all of you guys comment in the comment section i hope we start a nice big discussion as to which hero would be the ideal choice in this situation i hope we get tons of votes on the poll in my community tab and i'm really looking forward to hear what you guys have to think uh feel free to ask any questions anytime and until next time guys take care <laughs>